So today we're installing the cables uh, finally from garage to uh, the, meet the panels up there. Um, so as you can see, we need to get from here to here. And what we've done is the customer is actually uh, needing some drainage putting in as well. So we've got our good friend Ian, uh, who's a builder, who's doing all his drainage. So we're sharing, sharing some of that uh, trench for our cables. Uh, so I'll show you what we've been doing. We, we're nearly there. We've just got to do the last stretch up into the loft. Um, yeah, we're just uh, we're using this uh, 32 mil waste pipe, um, and then we've just come all the way along the trench, round, and then it goes along here, and just it goes into the garage just behind, behind there, and uh, yeah, keeps. Uh, keeps everything um, protected. So then what we're gonna do is put a bit of waste pipe close to there. So from, from, from this side, you're not gonna see it. And it literally was the only way um, to get from the garage to the house. Uh, so it's gonna keep it nice and tidy. And with that drain there, you're not gonna see um, that drain pipe. You're not gonna see the, our pipe work at all. And then we're gonna enter in the soffit, we've already got our hole up there. We're going to enter into there and then clip it up the the uh, trusses, and we're meeting a junction box that we've already got in place, where all the strings are going to connect to this. So yeah, job's a good one. Right, so the cables are, are in all the way back to uh, the inverters. Um, so how we've done that is we do have a junction box in the loft, um, which has obviously, because we did the solar the panels first. So we've connected into that junction box all the way down. We've run this 32 mil waste pipe down underground and it goes all the way along, turns that corner and in. Uh, there was a drain getting put in at the same time, which is why, um, you know, the trench is so big. So yeah, then we come into the garage, the DC cables enter up, and then they come all the way along, down this side, into the isolators, and up into the inverters. And we've tested all the cables all the way through now. We've just tested them, and we've, uh, we've got the uh, required voltage there. So a quick run through of what's uh, installed on this job and the components we've used and why. Uh, first we've got the 44 landscape installed Jinko Tiger Neo 435 watt all black panels. Beautiful looking panels and they look really slick along this roof. Uh, this roof, it was a great roof to work on. Nice pitch, about a 25 degree pitch. Um, and it's virtually directly south facing. Look at that view. Almost unhindered view. Uh, the only issue we have is the trees. We've got a tree on that side and a tree on this side as well, um, which will uh, draw some shading on the panels. Um, I think the customer's considering you know, taking the trees down or, or cropping them somewhat. But for now, we had to consider that in the design process. And that's why we went with the solar edge uh, technology. So every single panel has a solar edge optimizer under it as well, which uh, is fantastic because they can individually monitor every panel. Uh, and for those who don't know, optimizers will um, reduce the effect from shading so that because we've wired these in strings of 11. So there's four strings of 11. So if one panel uh, gets shading, it will not affect any of the others on that string. And that's how optimizers work. So they improve the efficiency uh, considerably. Um, so yeah, that was our choice. That's why we went with the Jinko Targaneo and the Solar Edge. And we also installed the bird mesh, the black bird mesh. Uh, we prefer bird mesh. It's uh, 
Not the uh, most enjoyable thing to install in the world, but um, it does the job. It keeps them pesky pigeons at bay. And also, it doesn't reduce uh, the efficiency of the panels. It allows optimum airflow underneath. Um, and you cannot see it from, from down there. And it looks great. Um, so yeah, let's have a look down in the garage. So just to quickly explain the individual components, we have inverter one, generation meter, inverter one, DC isolator, AC isolator inverter one. So they are all related to inverter one. Same again for inverter two. Um, basically they just take the readings, but we, we've got readings on the apps as well. We just put these generation meters in anyway. Um, and then we have this Modbus meter here from Solar Edge. Uh, that's necessary so that the data can be collected and you can see it on the, um, the site monitoring app. Um, so the, yeah, that's just basically, I've got, I've got that supplied from the Tesla gateway and then we've got an RS485 cable which connects to uh, this inverter and then that inverter connects to that inverter so they can talk to each other. This is the Tesla gateway and the Tesla gateway is basically like the brains of the operation and uh, this provides uh, power in the event of a power cut. It will switch over to off-grid mode. Fantastic piece of kit. And then we have the Tesla Powerwall. This is a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery, which is significant amount of battery storage. Although if you wanted to add more, you can do, you can stack them forwards. You, we've got room on this wall as well. Um, but for now, this is ample for the customer and they will, as they go with the solar over a year or two, they'll soon realize or understand if they need to add any more along the way. Um, this power wall, this beautiful bit of kit, looks nice it can be mounted inside or outside the house the other great thing about the you know having a battery in general or, or but the tesla as well is is that you know you can you can set uh the charge time for the middle of the night you know a lot, a lot of these tariffs now like octopus go flux uh, and other really good tariffs uh, provide a, a, a cheap rate at night uh, so you can utilize that at night charge this up fully um, and then you can use it throughout the day when the prices are higher next we have the uh, my energy eddy which uh, is a solar diverter so basically we're using this to heat the customers hot water um, any solar generation that is produced uh, will first of all be either used in the house by the customer whatever's been used at the time if they're not using it and there's excess, it'll go to the battery and fill that up. Once that's full and they're still not using, the uh, energy will be exported. But this will detect the export and it'll go, actually, I'll have a bit of that, thank you very much. And it'll send it to this hot water cylinder here, which is um, what we wired into the immersion. So there's an immersion uh, element in there. So it'll heat that hot water up. And once that's heated up, then of course, the energy will be exported, which you still get paid for as well. So lastly, we have the fantastic My Energy EV uh, Zappi, uh, which is by far our favorite EV to, to install. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice looking unit. Uh, it, it's just great. It's a great bit of kit to install. Uh, we've never had any problems with any of them. And um, you can set this as well. It's got fast mode, eco and eco plus. So depending on your preference, you can set Eco Plus is where um, it charges the car purely from solar. Um, Eco is where it will charge from solar. And if there isn't enough generation, it'll top it up from the grid. Or fast charge is where you just plug it in and it will pull from the grid and just charge the car quickly. Um, so it's just great. And these two devices work seamlessly together as well. So yeah, so that's everything. Um, that's the job finished. It's been an absolute pleasure doing this job and um, I hope you enjoyed watching all the videos uh, and uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoy our videos, please like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time.